61 seconds of logos. They say that history is written by the victors. Ironically, they are Victor Hugo, Victor Fleming, and Victor Garber. Marcus had a young daughter, Alicia, afflicted with progeria. This movie credits Dr. Marcus for the creation of the T-Virus, but didn't Resident Evil Apocalypse establish that none other than Jared Harris created it for his daughter? <laughs> This kid starts choking and the scene becomes a cut fest. I don't need three slightly different angles of the kid choking, nor do I need special cuts to people reacting. It's almost like they got this kid to do the scene and then said, hey, do you want to edit the movie too? It wouldn't be a horror movie if someone wasn't reading Fangoria in some scene. This guy was somehow never taught one of the first rules of life. If you ever see an empty gondola arrive with blood smeared all over it, you run! Why are we still going with the every character in the movies just have black umbrellas on hand in case there's a funeral bullshit? There isn't one goddamn person who would buy a blue one just to be different, because I believe there is. And this black umbrella funeral collection is all the bullshit. Dr. Isaacs became the guardian of his dead partner's child and her half of the company. And no one looked into the suspicious death of a young guy and how his business partner benefited from it. My name is Alice. And this is my story. You've said my name is Alice before every or nearly every Resident Evil movie. We know that you're recording these events for some sort of video diary, which was made clear in Resident Evil Afterlife, so there's no need to rehash every chapter and remind people you're Alice on every entry. I guess it's possible that you feel the need to do this just in case your other recordings get lost, but you really seem to be doing this just in case the diary's movie rights get sold and get cut into six different chapters over 14 years. Also, let's not forget your ability to keep this camcorder's battery juiced and find tapes to continue doing this for all the time you've been doing it. Not to mention somehow never losing it after all the new locations and battles you get into every movie. This movie just yada yada the whole ending to Resident Evil Retribution. Wesker told her that the last of humanity had come to Washington for the last stand, and the ending featured Alice on top of the White House while a war raged on. Alice's narration at the beginning of this movie says that it was a trap, and that's all it has to say for a setup to what could have been a pretty badass movie. I guess I'll have to look for Resident Evil 5.5 at my local Kim's video that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> could the Raccoon City Lab give some of these creatures gills as well? Because how else could this asshole camp out underwater until someone came by to take a drink from the pond? Movie shows us a building that has some damage, but not nearly enough damage to explain how this giant dragon thing got in here, buried under mounds of rubble to jump scare Alice. And if there was such an opening, why isn't it using that to fly out instead of stupidly crashing out of the building like it's goddamn Black Adam? Also, where exactly did these flying creatures mutate from? When the crows were infected in Resident Evil Extinction, they just remained crows. So does this mean there were pterodactyls and dragons just chilling in parts of the world? This creature was literally hovering just above Alice a second ago, and now it's inexplicably so far away that it can't even attack before she gets the Hummer started. Movie expects us to believe there are clear roads after Washington DC basically went through an apocalyptic battle that again, we never got to see. Alice drives past this truck turned on its side here with plenty of space to fit through. But when she comes back, the truck somehow nearly stretches over the entire road so that she can use it to ram the creature later. Hummer suddenly ramps on a flat road with no ramps in sight. Also, she times this so that she'll ram the creature into the truck. And maybe she didn't have any other option than this, but this is goddamn stupid. Why would crashing into the creature and the truck behind it not cause her any harm? Everyone behold, we are about to see one of the greatest wonders the world has ever known. The Claymore Mine of Convenience! Also, yes, Alice places this Claymore front-facing enemy, and most of the damage from it will fire around 700 marble-sized projectiles at a 60-degree blast radius in that direction. But you can't just be this f***ing close to a Claymore exploding and expect to either survive it or not get extremely hurt by it. Believe it or not, Alice will now chase this whirring sound for two agonizing minutes. Is there suspense? You don't know! Hello. Why does Alice assume this noise comes from a human? And why is she not trying to be as quiet as possible when monsters are everywhere? Why did the Red Queen stop using the printer for that long stretch of time where Alice was looking for it so that she could pad the runtime? Plus, what was her plan to lead her down here if there wasn't a printer from the late 1600s available? Alice, 10 years ago in the hive, we both failed. What the f is any of this Alice's fault? She was a pawn in a bigger scheme and she's been fighting to save the world for the last five movies. But sure, Red Queen, let's try and throw her under the bus with you, f***ing Red Queen. This doesn't cut off Alice's head or really injure her in any way. When I see a truck parked long ways across the highway like this, I wonder how Alice hasn't encountered any of these until now. Hell, the movie didn't even need to have her drive over spikes to stop her. This giant truck would have done the same Fing, <laughs> <laughs> why? Why would anyone be hiding in a bustable thingamabob in the hot ass desert? And <laughs> why didn't they set up the spikes here under the bridge? <laughs> Pinalis. Is that all you got? This taunt somehow makes everyone lose their minds and Alice ends up killing everyone without getting the least bit hurt. Alice has proven her badassery, but it's easy to be a badass when everyone else is just bad. Also, even by Resident Evil standards, this action sequence is really sh**. 
It's like Paul, not the director of Boogie Nights Anderson, took every bad part of MCU action sequences and then asked Kevin Feige to hold his Red Bull. This franchise has shown Alice to be a very intelligent and resourceful character, until it needs her to be the stupidest person on the planet. The Alice from the last five films would never fall for this blatant motorcycle trap, so why did she in this one? So you're awake at last. I killed you. Yet here I am. Clone. And now we find out Isaacs is still alive, and the Isaacs that Alice killed in a previous entry was a clone. And I'm more certain in every outing that these movies should be titled Retconned and Evil. I really would like to know why every bad guy in this franchise seems to have a bunch of dead Alice clones on hand. What purpose could they possibly serve, other than to freak out the original Alice with when she inevitably shows up? I want to know what you know. Then maybe you shouldn't have put her in a situation where hundreds if not thousands of zombies could easily catch up with her and kill her. It would appear your mission to Washington was less successful than you made out. Impossible. I don't know whether it is or isn't impossible, but it's weird to me if that whole thing in Washington was to set Alice up for her to die, then why didn't he just kill her since she didn't have her powers anymore? I understand making her believe she had powers and sending her into a T-virus war zone was supposed to kill her, but why leave any of that to chance? I think she knows about the airborne antivirus. Raise the security level at the hive to maximum. Sure, that works, but you can also do another small thing. Just kill her! Get up there and check it out. Why does anyone need to get up there and check it out? Do you not have radios? And didn't you have a camera on Alice while she was running behind the tank? And if you know about her abilities, why send Scrubby McScrubberson all by himself? These zombies that have somehow made it to the side of the tank makes me feel like the movie was lying to me when it said they couldn't catch up to Alice when she was behind the tank. This guy was, for all we know, a greedy-ass doctor who turned into a cult leader. How the f*** is he hanging with Alice right now? No one else can, but because he's a legacy character, he can for reasons. When they set up the shots for these movies, what exactly is the process here? Did Paul W.S. Anderson say, I want every angle I can get, and when I go to the editing room, I want to use all of them! The storyboards for these things must be a series of frames depicting hand cramps and vodka. Move! This guy has an absolutely open shot at Alice with a variety of weapons and misses like an absolute anus. Holy sh! this tank has a targeting system and the guy thought he was Luke f***ing Skywalker or some sh**? Go f*** yourself, movie! Also, even with the targeting system, this guy somehow misses hard, miss harder with his rockets. Good thing they brought the severed hand bandages today. You just never know when you're gonna get in a fight with someone and lose a hand. Target is 72 miles and closing. Lock down the hive. Prepare defensive measures. Didn't you already do that? And what's preventing you from sending everyone you can to stop her before she gets here? And why is the highway so goddamn clear for 72 miles? She's a stranger. You should have thrust her. Alice is telling them that they should be on high alert for a convoy that they see coming towards them and of which they are already highly suspicious. She's obviously Claire's friend who trusts her and you trust Claire. So get the f*** out of here with this dude who wants to shoot first and ask questions later bullshit. It's almost like the movie doesn't think there are enough antagonists. Why should I trust you? Oh, I don't know. Maybe because he saved you from getting shot on the roof just mere seconds ago. And sure, he ends up being a bad guy and none of this makes sense, but get with the program, Alice. Also, he puts the liquid to his lips and we're supposed to celebrate the trust now? Anybody can fake this nonsense. You release this antivirus, it's going to kill you. Whatever it takes. Alice, I'm not. You know I'm right. They can't possibly know this would kill Alice. Maybe they could keep her indoors or underground until the effects of the antivirus leave the atmosphere. I'm just saying Claire is being super dismissive of a cure that would save the planet when she doesn't even have all the details. And I'm sure this movie wouldn't keep telling us it will kill Alice if she releases the antivirus and then give some bullshit answer to why she doesn't. Right? Right? Not too many firearms. We have a big supply of gasoline. It's like that movie, The Road Warrior, only without Mad Max or Lord Humongous or psycho biker named Wes. It's infinitely less cool, actually. I don't even know why I'm comparing us to them. This is the dumbest way to write an insignia on a knife. In the phrase, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, why would you put is mine, saith by itself in this one middle section? Even if you were to hypothetically smooth out the creases, there's way too much space between those middle words and the others. I mean, I guess Isaacs is not as close as he appears to the hanging zombies, but why take the chance? Does he really need to be on top of the tank? He's here. And I know this for a scientific fact because there was a rumble and some dirt moved. Close the gates! I'm wondering, how does someone go from the bottom floor to the roof of this incredibly damaged, hollowed out building? The movie has been pretty tight-lipped about the elevator and stair situation here, so I'm assuming all travel from floor to floor is done with a series of vines and clothes hangers. My god, it's an army. It is, but how exactly? Isaac said earlier to Alice, We reach Raccoon City in just over 12 hours. I doubt even you can run for that long. So how are the zombies still running for that long? I mean, they have a hunger that drives their adrenaline, but some of those bodies would still have weaker legs than others, and so on. Alive or dead, running for 12 hours is something very few, if any, could pull off. What are we gonna do? We're gonna kill every last one of them. 
There's something I've been working on in secret away from the team. It's a surprise. No, you're going to love it. I don't even need to explain it before we go into battle. It's so awesome. There's a survivor. <laughs> Open the gate. What kind of tactic is this? You lower your defenses for one person? You really think you're going to be able to lower the gate, get her in, and not have your base breached by the end of it? I think it's nice and all. She wants to save this woman, but what about all the other people's lives you're risking on the inside? Marker two. Jeez, I know Orange is the new Batwoman hung out in her father's chop shop and picked up some engineering tips, but how is she able to construct a highly accurate trebuchet in a matter of hours? Claire and Doc survived this. Looks like she's out of tricks. Which is weird because they built a trebuchet to throw flaming barrels of gasoline at tanks just like his and somehow decided they'd stop that strategy altogether. They threw two burning barrels and just quit for some reason, even though we were told they have a sh ton of gasoline. Alice! We're at the barricade! Claire. You have to hold him there. Claire chooses to start shooting instead of replying back with, you get your f***ing ass down here and hold them back yourself, Alice. Hold them back. Even Alice has to see that would be f***ing impossible at this point. Oh no, not... I have no idea what her name is, but oh no! Alice! We can't hold on much longer. Get out of there now. Which is what Alice should have had them do in the first place. Remember in the previous movies when Alice was awesome at strategy and would do everything she could not to let anyone on her side get hurt or killed? Because the final chapter seems to have forgotten this aspect of her character. These assholes saved most of the gasoline for this one last gasp just in case the walls were breached instead of going on the offensive with it in the first place before the breaching happened. Amazing, in the sea of zombies, Alice was able to zip line into an area where there's enough space to pull out a shotgun and defend herself. Also, when your zip lining sequence is less exciting than the zip lining sequence in Tango and Cash, you're getting five extra cents. Where were these zombies a couple of seconds ago, and why were they waiting for someone to run by them? Alice and her crew are out in the open prior to this. There, on the horizon. The horizon Abigail is pointing out is in the middle, and therefore is boring as sh This is not John Ford's Resident Evil, and it really should be. So I was wrong about you. Blow me. I'm actually kind of surprised this guy doesn't point out how Alice's stupid decision to lower the gate nearly killed them all. But yay, Christian is on Alice's side now. Woohoo! I've honestly never understood how these computer perspectives are supposed to enhance our viewing experience or add anything to the movies. They just make me think about Tron. And I hate thinking about Tron. The defenses would be more efficient if I retain control of them. I seem to remember last time she was here, she walked out alive. I don't intend to make that same mistake. Dude, you've made that mistake of leaving Alice alive several times in these movies, right? Anyway, I don't know why they can't simply team up on the defense but I routinely root for the bad guys to make smart decisions and I am nearly always shut out, so what do I know? Unleash the Cerberus. Cerberus, on play. On play, on play. This movie suddenly turns into The Running Man with Wesker playing the Richard Dawson character and the audience picking out their favorite gladiator to take on Ben Richards and f do I ever want to see The Running Man right now? But I hope you leave enough room for my fist because I'm going to ram it into your stomach and break your goddamn spine! Oh yeah, that's the stuff. You have someone? For all this. I'm asking because these movies have done a really poor job of making your past important to you whatsoever. And there's a slam bang ending in store where it becomes important. Figured that running through a bombed out pit that will soon be infested by zombie dogs was the best time for that question. Sometimes I feel like this has been my whole life. Mila Jovovich's exact words when asked about filming the Resident Evil film somehow makes its way into the script. Run. Run fast! Only one person dies in this attack sequence and that is all the zombie dog sh Hundreds of these demon dogs surround all the humans and somehow Alice and crew still end up with a clear path to jump off the cliff into the water. And apparently these things can only run at human speed. Seal the hive. I hate this movie. You mean she could have sealed it before they walked in? The dogs would have eventually gotten them, right? Or something else? Like, I don't know, consumption? Also, this is sealing the hive? I understand that Umbrella is an evil corporation, but exactly why would they spend time and resources on a f***ing Temple of Doom style compactor wall? No guns. No ammo. Cliche. Alice? What's with the lights? This part of the hive is damaged. The power is erratic. Just because Alice does know the answer to this question doesn't make the fact that Doc assumed she would any less stupid. You asked why I would turn against Umbrella, and I promised you an answer. There was really no reason why I waited until now to tell you this. It's not like you needed to trust me or anything. I propose that we end the world. But on our terms. Granted, I don't know about the dynamics of the people who run Umbrella. Maybe they're all evil people. But I'm assuming in private, all of these people have secretly expressed to Isaacs a wish for an apocalypse to happen. Otherwise, men in lab coats come to collect you. It's been done once before. Perhaps you've heard the story of a Jewish carpenter named Thanos. When this recording was uploaded to my data stream, it created a conflict in my programming. No, it didn't. Uploading a file where someone talks about starting the apocalypse shouldn't interfere at all with your programming because they're not programming anything. I was created to serve the Umbrella Corporation, but I was also programmed to value human life. And it took 14 years for me to finally let someone know about my burden. But I can tell you that Umbrella had an informant in Raccoon City. 
It is highly likely that this person is now here with you. For f**k's sake, little girl, do you really not know who it is? All the conversations, files, and data you're privy to, and you can't tell Alice who it might be? And could you have maybe said this without moving your lips? Because someone probably reversed halved your ass and know that you tipped Alice off. Here's yet another tank with yet another person tied to it, running to keep pace with the zombies, and now Dr. Isaac stands in front of its path to stop it. So how does the massive army of the undead know to stop as well? Why aren't they swarming Dr. Isaacs right now? Earlier, the dogs decided not to chase them into the hive because they were scared of something inside, or some sh**. Now, Alice and crew have hit a semi-dead end where they have to claw through a turbine, and whatever the dogs were scared of is completely forgotten, so the dogs literally called themselves off for no apparent reason. Flashlight searching around this fan goes on for all the some time. Honestly, at this point, if this fan doesn't turn on automatically and chop at least one of these characters up, I'm going to be pissed. Might seem like a weird or gross thing to get angry about. And if you're thinking that, I'm assuming this is your first time at the channel. Welcome, and hope you stay a while. We will be having crab cakes and stuffed bluefish later. It will be delightful. Alice goes in to save Abigail from the cutting action of the giant turbine, but the editing cuts so much of the action that I'm surprised the editor didn't kill the characters in the editing room. Reverse polarity of the turbine. Oh, sh**. We're going to see some hot reverse polarity action. I feel tingles in my nethers whenever I hear reverse polarity. I once had to leave church early. Ah! <laughs> what a dumbass. For whatever reason, Wesker turns off the extremely successful turbine after one death. This dude running behind the tank should be dead. We saw him earlier just before Dr. Isaacs stopped the tank. Maybe this is a different guy, but since Isaacs has a new mentality and is just killing everyone he doesn't like, I find it hard to believe he bothered to attach a new runner. For inexplicable reasons, there is a trap door here, followed by this honeycomb hatch, which has a weird timer that opens and closes it for some reason, which falls into the mines of Moria where Gandalf fought the Balrog that one time. Nothing about this sequence of trapdoors and dwarf mines makes any goddamn sense whatsoever. Then the movie tops itself with more nonsense by implementing these differently operating trapdoors that don't go to the same basement of the mines of Moria we saw before. So I guess Wesker and or the Hive is just indiscriminately killing one person on the crew at a time, like a dumber Freddy Krueger or Jason Voorhees? He could have easily killed this whole group in seconds, but doesn't for some reason. <laughs> Do falls from great heights just not kill anyone in this franchise? If you started the movie here and told me we were watching Saw 8, I would absolutely believe you. <laughs> Don't mind me, just getting in my running for the day. <laughs> Slaughterhouse Forest is Chicago's best haunted house, but they've been the subject of lawsuits since they allowed their performers to start touching slash eating the customers. Now guys, I know I've really been harping on the editing of this movie, how it sucks a giant eggplant to watch and how joyless it is. I know you get the point and you don't need me to go any further into how bad the editing in this movie is, so I'm gonna stop. <laughs> I can't even finish that sentence with a straight face. There are at least 67 cuts in this 30 second chase. Yes, I counted them. Yes, I'm not happy with my chosen profession in life. <laughs> Why do people in movies like this do this? Can't you address them first? Is saying someone's name out loud akin to yelling Rumpelstiltskin? Alice wipes off the grime on this window, and based on absolutely zero evidence provided by the movie, that makes her realize she's in that laser trap hallway from Resident Evil 1. Noah's Ark for the rich. Look, I am outraged! Something like this would have taken way more than 17 months to plan, which is the amount of time the Red Queen told us had elapsed between Isaac's meeting with the board and the T-Virus outbreak. Thousands of rich people tucked away in cryogenic storage? And how do you keep a thing like this secret? Also, far be it from me to tell the rich and powerful what they're going to do post-apocalypse. But what is life going to be like when you don't have anybody doing the work you wouldn't do before the zombies came? I guess she snuck in some janitors, trash collectors, restaurant servers, the list goes on and on into this cryogenic chamber. We've been betrayed. Dun dun dun! Another Isaac clone! This movie's got a clone for every plot hole you can think of. I drop it here. The antivirus goes nowhere and your hopeless dreams will die sooner rather than later. If there's only one vial, how would that be enough to go airborne and fix the entire planet? I'm starting to think they've just been making this storyline up from movie to movie. If this guy is a surprise Umbrella spy, why didn't he kill Alice already? What exactly was his function as a spy that helped Umbrella whatsoever? I expect this movie's answer to have something to do with a clone. <sighs> Sherlock Holmes in Alice's next move with three visions and adding time to the movie we don't need. You don't make it to the ice pick, the decanter, or the fountain pen. Oh my god. Is this movie really stopping to show off Isaac's predictive combat software? God damn, what a turd. And what's even worse is he installed this shit and then froze himself for a time where he probably wouldn't need it. I get these movies don't have the budget for the greatest of special effects, but I can't figure out why there wasn't enough cash to spring for a little better old age makeup. It kills me that very few movies can ever make it look convincing. We can Benjamin Button all goddamn day and most people are happy with the results, but add a few prosthetic wrinkles and we're all calling bullshit. 
I've been waiting years for her to die. Why didn't you murder her? Are you worried about Apocalypse Court f***ing up your plans? You killed her dad, your partner, with no problem, and apparently with no investigation whatsoever. Albert Wesker, you're fired. Okay, so now the Red Queen is free to hurt Wesker even though she's supposed to value human life or some sh The rules are hazy. Also, if that's all it takes to give the Red Queen permission to cause harm to this asshole, then why didn't Alicia fire him long ago? How did you know it was me? You're still alive. True, that would probably be a dead giveaway, except he was in the exact same danger as everyone else while they explored the hive. He could have easily been sucked into the turbine or fell into the unexplained pit or eaten by a Gru. Him being alive doesn't really mean sh** when you consider all that. Also, Alice had so many opportunities to kill him before now, but instead waited till he could actually get the drop on her. That totally checks out with Alice's actions during the entire franchise. I should have killed you in Washington. And we should have been able to see what happened in Washington, so I feel like all of us are losers in the end. He only has to evade you for another few minutes, and the last remaining human outposts will fall. Are you guys ever going to explain what's specifically going to happen to humans at the end of this ticking clock? Having watched to the end, I don't think they ever explain what happens when the clock hits zero. Earlier in the movie, the Red Queen said there were a little over 4,000 people left on the planet, and they'd just die after 48 hours, no explanation given. If Umbrella has a bomb or something that'll wipe out the remaining human outposts, why didn't they do that sooner? You are all going to die down here. Introducing AFI's 8,782nd best line of all time. Glad they got a call back in. I wasn't running. I already can hear the questions regarding the earlier sin about how the Isaacs clone was too good at combat, but we've been shown the real Isaacs had technological upgrades, and there was no mention of the clones having the same upgrades in their system. Also, I don't give a sh**, and therefore my previous sin counts. <laughs> Scoop! This is the final fight of the entire franchise, and it's a punchy, punchy, kicky, kicky affair between two people with the exact same powers. It's Man of Steel with Mila Jovovich. Oh, sh**, that actually sounds kind of awesome. Alice nearly dies because her head is slightly sticking out over the elevator floor, which suggests poor planning and design on Umbrella's part, or the unskilled people they hired and killed to do their elevators. None of these movies have ever even explained why this hallway exists. Why does it exist? Why? And why does it start out with the straight line lasers if it can do the take up the whole hallway pattern? This f hallway is so goddamn stupid. Alice stabs Isaacs, and now I'm wondering where his predictive combat Miss Cleo sh went. We played a long game, you and I. Well, some of the series took elements from the game. The movies and the games are pretty separate at this point. I'm, I'm not even sure this line is making a cheeky reference to the games or not. But f*** it, this line is annoying enough for a sin. I'd remove every sin from this franchise as she dropped the antivirus right now. These f***ing people come back so many times, I'm giving Alice a sin for not finding something to chop Isaac's head off before she took off. This is your fault, Alice. Send in the clones. Oh, f*** your screenplay role. How the f*** did he get up here in time? Are you suggesting that coconut migrate? What the hell are you? I'll just let Jorah Mormont send this. I'm you, you idiot. Will you throw this f***ing thing to the ground already? If you have to time it for a gaggle of undead to show up in your immediate vicinity, then how is this supposed to spread across the entire f***ing globe? <laughs> also, this action saves the entire planet. Let me say that again. This action saves the entire planet. Movie doesn't know how to airborne vaccine correctly for sh**. When Isaacs died, I could bring myself back online and stop the attacks on the remaining human settlements. <sighs> you and Alicia, you lied to me. We had to know if you were willing to make the sacrifice to give up your life for others. No, you did not. If you told her that the antivirus would kill all the undead and leave Alice alive, what changes? Besides, what choice did you have? It's not like you had a long list of people who could save humanity, and you only had 48 hours to act. This was something no one at Umbrella would have done. Yeah, but it's dumb to compare them to Alice, since they weren't infected with the T-Virus, and therefore would have no sacrifice to make. This willing to sacrifice yourself for others tripe is some tacked-on bullshit, man. If she decided not to go through with it because she didn't like the idea of dying, what was your plan? Dorito Ninja Cake Loafers? That string of words is more understandable than we needed to lie to you to see how worthy you were to save humanity. F sense. You became something more than they could ever have anticipated. The clone became more human than they ever could be. Nice sentiment, but a clone of a human is a human in my book. And people doing terrible things is pretty f***ing human. I think the words you're looking for, Alicia, are... Alice, you're nice, you're super nice, and also the end. Before she died, Alicia downloaded her memories. 
for you. I f***ing hate it when people insist on showing me their home movies. These memories are not Alice's. They are as meaningless as downloading Muffy Mouse's memories from today's special into her. Also, when they decided to come out into the desert hills for one last exposition dump, I'm wondering why they picked a place where Claire has to sit awkwardly on this rock all the way through it. That's gotta be murder on her back. When the T-virus spread across the earth. Ending your movie and franchise with narration. It could take years for it to reach every corner of the earth. Okay, so why didn't Umbrella make more of this antivirus? If the whole idea was to wipe out the T-virus so they could resurface, then why did they make an antivirus that could take years to cover the planet? Until then, my work is not done. So the final chapter was kind of a lie, huh? Even if they don't make another movie with Mila, she continued killing zombies and She's way too casual about seeing the kind of creature she needed a screenplay to beat last time, and this time there were three of them. Pictures they make these days are all MTV. Cut, 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 cut. You come here to gloat? I'm not gonna gloat, it's not who I am. I want you to stop me. I came here for you to beat me. Hydra was founded on the belief that humanity could not be trusted with its own freedom. What we did not realize was that if you try to take that freedom, they resist. What are we gonna do? Win the whole f***ing thing. What are we gonna do? Let's show this prehistoric bitch how we do things downtown. Cool guys don't look at explosions. There's something here you gotta see. A megalodon. I seem to remember last time she was here, she walked out alive. I don't intend to make that same mistake. F*** you, blow me. F*** it up ourselves. No guns. No ammo. What the hell are we supposed to use, man? Harsh language? What is this thing? I mean, there's no useful purpose for there to be a bunch of choppy, crushy things in the middle of a whole thing. Don't worry. I'm not gonna kill you. I cannot kill my friend. Kill my friend. And you have one more step to make. Come